Happy Friday, beautiful. I hope you had the most amazing week. It is finally Friday. It is finally the weekend. We are going to sit down and go through all the new makeup that's been released, announced in sneak peek. Then I'm going to let you know how I feel about these things. I also have a very cool sale coming up. I have some very interesting news when it comes to like beauty news that we can talk about. And the Unisai mystery boxes are back. I know people are excited about those. Also, Kaisa is back. Oh, I know, I know. I know. Don't lick my lipstick. I love you. I love you. Okay, I didn't film this look. I can tell you that right now. But I am using one of these Lethal Cosmetics gels. This one is in uh, Gamma. I'm using that over my eyeliner to get this to be like this multi-chrome result. That is what I'm having. And I'm having a liquid lipstick from Lisa Eldridge on. This one is in Dragon. That's what's on my lips. That's basically the entire look, except like, you know, foundation and stuff. But I didn't do any eyeshadow today. I was feeling a, a little bit of an eyeliner. So I hope you're okay with that. We're kicking it old school, but let me scoochie scoochie to the side. <laughs> like this. I think that's good. And we can start talking about the news. The first thing that I want to talk about is actually that my own brand, Singe Beauty, is having an anniversary sale. Can you believe it's been one year since Singe launched? absolutely mind-boggling. Actually, today, the 22nd of March, it is one year since I announced my brand. And then on Monday, the 25th, it is one year since my brand launched. So we decided to do an annual just celebration anniversary sale. It is ongoing right now. If you use the code one year as one word, you will get 20% off the entire website and that includes the bundle prices. So you will get an additional 20% off the bundle prices. It is ongoing until midnight central standard time on Monday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're having an anniversary sale at Singe and thank you so much for your support this year. I cannot wait to show you what I have coming in the future. I know a bunch of people are asking me when is the new launch once new launch and trust me I would have wished for it to launch already but if there's one thing I'm learning as a new brand owner is that even though I've done collabs before and I knew that things took time they take even longer time than I ever thought possible to like to just produce things like from scratch so I hope you can be patient with me I am hoping to have more than one more thing launching this year. I have a bunch of things even in production right now. So yes, I cannot wait to share that with you. But if you are interested in shopping some brushes or sponges or poops, they are now available for 20% off at our website. And I will leave that down below. And again, just as an extra disclaimer, this is my own brand. I am the sole owner of Singe Beauty. This is my own indie brand. And I will leave a link to it down below. The next thing I want to talk about is the mystery boxes from Udazai. Let me actually pull this up so that I can give you like the proper... Um, the proper details because I also happen to have some secret extra information that the owner Henji told me about. So the mystery boxes, they're launching on the 29th of March and they're ending this like whole mystery box deal on the 1st of April. So that's going to be next weekend and they are going to be $45 for a $90 worth and $75 for $170 worth. But I am here to let you know that per usual, these mystery boxes are a mystery. You cannot pick the things that are inside. You cannot wish for certain things to be inside. You're getting them on a random and everything can be included on the Unasai website in these boxes, except the last collection that they had that collab collection with Annette, Tina and Judy. Those things will not be included in the mystery box, but everything else can be included. And secret surprise, a couple of limited edition products, most popular, the things that have sold the most in the past are coming back as like a surprise addition to some of these mystery boxes. And again, if you have never tried Odin's Eye, this is a perfect opportunity. Or if you only have a couple of things from the brand, this is a perfect opportunity to get more things from the brand, try even more things at a very, very good value because you can add my code on top as well and you will get an additional 10% off. I will leave info about that down below, but they are bringing back the two original Christmas Christmas palettes and the original Hella. Hella is going to be included in some of these boxes. The quantity is very limited and unfortunately you cannot like pick, but I'm very excited to see some people uh, getting the original Hella because it's been gone now for quite some time. And I know I have a bunch of new subscribers and followers since Hella was launched. It was in 2022, I think Hella was 
released, right? Yeah, more than two years ago because I think it was in February because I was in Mexico with my friend Heather Austin celebrating when it was announced and when it launched. So I'm just very excited. Udensai did let me know. They're like, how do you feel about this? And I think it's gonna be super fun. So if you have any questions about the mystery boxes, I don't know the absolute details. You're gonna to have to ask them about that, but this is a great chance to get some fun things from Uden's Eye in a mystery box if you don't already own a lot from the brand. Me getting a mystery box? Doesn't really make sense because I have everything from the brand, including these limited edition things, but it's always fun. And don't forget to use the code when you're checking out. You don't have to use my code, but use a code and you can get an additional 10% off. And I will leave the info about that down below as well. I don't know if these are gonna like sell out or not, but if they are, just keep an eye on them. I know we talked about the potential collab, which I think is not even like potential, like it's gonna happen between ColourPop and Pokemon last week, but ColourPop has already actually announced what they're releasing this week, which is already available, and what they're releasing next week. So the earliest that the Pokemon collab could come is the week after that, if you're wondering about some kind of a timeline. So what was released this week is the So Elemental palette, and this is like a cool toned, taupey gray almost like jean blue kind of a palette it is much more faded than some of the other blue palettes that they have and i think that this looks really cute and if you have been keeping up you know that i said that 2024 is going to be the year where i try and i'm going to try and i'm going to review everything that ColourPop releases. So I don't know if this is coming to me in PR. I will say I do have a PR package coming in from ColourPop. So if it's this palette, I mean, obviously I'm trying it. If it's not this palette, if it's the next release we're gonna talk about, I'm still gonna buy this palette. <laughs> I'm still gonna buy this palette because I'm trying everything. And I really like the, the undertone of that blue matte that's in the corner. That is something that I can get on board with. It is like not gray. It's as gray as I would like to go. It's the leaning blue, but it's cool tone and it's definitely gray. I'm interested to see how that is gonna look on my eyes. And I also really like that there is a mix between darker and lighter shades. You know, I love the contrast between a really light shade and a really dark shade. So I don't think this is gonna be my most favorite palette from ColourPop ever, but I will try it and I will review it. And if you're ordering from ColourPop, you can also get some money off and use my code if you're interested in getting 10% off. The thing that they're releasing next week is another part of the So Juicy collection. I don't know, they had the So Juicy lip glosses, the one in the tube, but I don't think they have those anymore. Oh, I used to love those. I thought those were so good, but I don't think they have those anymore. But they are releasing the So Juicy Plumping Gloss Balm. I am surprised that it took ColourPop this long because they have their own factory. They don't produce their own packaging, but they have their own factory to do the click glosses, like the click stick lipsticks. I am surprised it took ColourPop this long because yes, they don't produce their own packaging, but they do produce their own makeup. And I don't know, did it take them this long to perfect the formula? Did it take them this long to source the packaging? I'm not 100% sure, but now they're coming out with their own version of the click glosses. And these are gonna be $10 each, and then they have a So Juicy Plumping Lip Liner. Not gonna lie. When I read these things, I'm like, plumping as in mint? Or plumping as in chili? Because you know, uh, those lip liners from Too Faced, the plumping lip liners, I saw my life flashing before my eyes. <laughs> I really despise those. They were so burning for hours hours, I absolutely despise them. So I had to read up about the ingredients. This one says that it has lip boosting actives like hyaluronic acid, ginger, mm, peptides, and peppermint. So I'm like, the ginger, the peppermint gives me hope that it's more of a cooling one. I do love a cooling, but the ginger, tingly but refreshing. I mean, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it, that's my whole thing. I'm gonna try everything from ColourPop and it's the same with the lip liners. Peptize Ginger Peppermint. I will say I love the shades of the lip liners. They look gorgeous and I hope I love them. But it is a little worrisome. It is a little worrisome. Again, if I don't get them in PR, I will pick them up. Um, I'm excited to see ColourPop release. Did you not miss ColourPop? I know we always complain like, oh, ColourPop releases so much, but did we not just like a smidge miss ColourPop? I mean, they didn't release this palette that, they, that I talked about before. It's the first thing they're releasing since the Valentine's collection. Keep that in mind. It has been a month. 
this is the first thing they're releasing for a month. I don't think Colourpop no longer, that no longer is Colourpop. Wow, grammar out the window. No longer is Colourpop the brand that releases a lot. So when we say that brands are releasing like Colourpop, we can no longer like even count Colourpop into that because releasing something once a month is pretty normal for a lot of bigger brands, even smaller indie brands. Like some brands do release one palette a month. So I will say kudos to Colourpop for just taking a breather and a little bit of a chill pill. I am a million percent buying this. It's already in my wish list, like basket over at Sephora. I am making my basket for the Sephora sale. I'm actually very excited because there are a couple of things that I've been wanting to try, but I didn't really want to pay full price for it. And I think that these new products from Give Beauty is going to be that. Let's talk about the Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint first. This is a cheek tint or like a liquid blush. I'm guessing since it's called Chic Tint, maybe they will leave a tint behind. So it's gonna be a really long lasting blush. It is a liquid blush with a doe foot applicator, which honestly I think is my favorite way of applying a liquid blush. I've tried so many different ways of applying a liquid blush. I think this is my favorite. I get as much as I want. I don't have to deal with the poof. I don't have to deal with a pump and it getting too much. I just think that this one is, it's a good way. I like this way a lot. And I think the shades that they're releasing are really cool. There are some muted shades, some poppy shades, some deeper shades, some lighter shades. I like these shades a lot. I love how they look on Gwen. And when you look at these promo pictures, like when you look at them one by one, it even says that Gwen did her own makeup. And I actually really appreciate that. Like she did her own makeup for the promo pictures. I'm sure it's Photoshopped and there's a professional photographer there, but. She did her own makeup. That was the whole thing about her brand. She started a brand because she was always doing her makeup and she loved makeup and she wanted to create her favorite products. So I do appreciate that these pictures, it says like she did her own makeup. The next one is the Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Gel. I love that it's called lip gel because it makes me very intrigued. I'm thinking this is gonna be one of those more uh, like pillowy formulas that's gonna fill out the like lines of your lips and just make your lips look smooth and plump. I'm very, very excited. Gelled gloss formula, smooths, hydrating, long wearing. See, this is what I'm saying. I think it's going to be one of those that smooths the lips and looks like a little bit pillowy on the lips and just lasts a long time. Minimizes the appearance of fine lines. Just the word gel made me think that all of these things. So I'm very excited. Very excited. It says tinted color. Again, is it going to leave a tint? I'm not sure but I will try this one as well. I think I might wait until the Sephora sale simply because I have some new makeup that I wanna try. And I am probably gonna have that video up next week, but then I'm going to New Orleans for creators and friends. I'm gonna be gone for a week. So next week we're doing new makeup releases per normal. And then the week after, I'm actually gonna do new makeup releases on Sunday because I'm gonna be in New Orleans on Thursday, which is the day that I normally film. So. It's coming, but just on Sunday instead. And I'm not gonna film that week. So if I wanna try some new makeup, I might as well just wait for the sale, right? Am I wrong in thinking this? So I hope not all shades sell out quickly. I like the shades of these as well. I think they look really beautiful. I think I'm probably gonna try the peach one, like the really poppy peach in both colors. But you know what? I like Give Beauty. I think it is a solid brand with solid products. And most of the things I've tried from the brand, I've really liked. And I'm excited that they're coming out with more stuff. Okay, I'm gonna have to censor this picture again because Isamaya Beauty is coming out with another um, penis-shaped lipstick. I, again, I have nothing against this. It's just me. I am not gonna pull out a penis out of my bag and, and start applying that to my lips out and about. It's for me, this is more like a gag. It's a humor. It's a fun thing. And if you are running in the right circles, I think this will be such a good joke and such a fun thing. And honestly, I, I don't hate the idea. I know there are people out there that are like, this is so cool. This is so, I, I love the idea of pulling this out and as a shock value, I'm not that person. I don't, not that I'm a prude. I'm definitely not a prude. I just don't see the fun and shock value in it. So for me, and also I think they're like $100, $95. That's not for me. Also the color, are we doing metallic lips again? Because do, do we remember 2016, 17 with the metallic lips? It's one of those trends where I'm like, I really did not need that back. I, no, you, 
don't get to tell me that we are not currently living in 2016. Contour palettes, metallic lipsticks, eyeliner is back. I'm even wearing eyeliner. Like this is a full on 2016 simulation and you don't get to tell me that that's not what's happening. But this is now used to be only a lip balm formula. Now she's also coming out with a lipstick formula. Not for me. I get who it's for, I just realize it's not me. If I have $100 to spend on makeup, it's not gonna be this. I saw this picture from Pat McGrath and I was like, at this point, they're just that really just trolling us. I thought it was so funny because this one was like a, it was like a sneak peek that came up on the Instagram for Pat McGrath and someone was actually telling, more than one person was telling me that apparently Pat McGrath has nothing to do with the Pat McGrath makeup line, like Pat McGrath the person, the makeup artist, has nothing to do with the brand, Pat McGrath Labs, the makeup brand, which would explain a lot why it's lost, it's like, creative edge, let's say, but they put up this sneak peek and I know it's really hard to read, so I'm gonna read it, but it says, searching CH5 channel detected, new frequency detected, broadcasting on soft focus and illumination, tune into an expanded world of blurring and brightening perfection, the countdown to a pink paradise. And I giggled and I was like, isn't that what we've been doing this past couple of years? the pink paradise, it's funny. Come on, it's funny. And at this point, them putting this here, pink paradise, they have got to be like joking, right? They're like, gotcha. But I think they're releasing, cause they did put up another picture afterwards and I'm gonna put something here. I think they're releasing uh, and their setting powder. I think they're either releasing more setting powders or they're expanding the setting powder that they have into a pink one, which, I mean, I guess they're like one and a half year late, but better late than never. I mean, it's surprising the way that the brand loves pink that they didn't do, jump on this trend immediately. But again, like I said in the beginning, product development sometimes takes way longer than you think. Tarte has released a couple of things and I saw these and immediately I was like, oh, that's cute. Uh, this is the uh, Shape Tape Glow Blush Bar. I have no idea why these are called Shape Tape. I guess they are not, wealthy enough to trademark anything else but Tarte Shape Tape. I don't know, now they're just slapping that on everything, but it is a blush and highlighter palette in two shades. So there's one highlighter and two blushes, one for light and one for dark. They look amazing on the skin. Like if you look at the listing on Tarte, it looks beautiful. And I was like, this is cute. And I was like, like slap myself out of it because two pink blushes. Where am I going with this? Face palette? I don't even use face palettes. So I talked my way out of that quickly, but I will say they are also releasing the Park Avenue Princess Cream Blush and Bronzer Duo. This one they used to have in two different shades. Wait, I have this one. Let me go get it. And now it's coming back in four shades. So I don't know if they're bringing back the two old ones because me looking at this picture, I think they used to have one that was like a berry and a darker brown and then a lighter brown and a pinky peach. Oh my God, I got a delivery and Kaisa got all up in arms. What I wanted to say, the one that I have, I think the two that are closest to me here might be the old ones and then they're adding two newer ones, one that's even lighter and one that's even darker. Or maybe this is the one on the bottom, I don't know. I don't know. But what I wanted to say, this bronzer works on me. And that's why I'm thinking that this probably, if they're gonna come out with something, it's probably one that's lighter and one that's darker. This is still in my collection. I've had this for, I think a year and a half. This is great quality, beautiful quality. If you are looking for a blush and bronzer duo, this is creamy, blendable, it dries down, beautiful on the skin. Really, really like this formula. And I think like this one has the blue packaging and I think the one that they're releasing now has the gold packaging or like at least a tan packaging, I don't know. I don't know if it's gold or tan. These are great formula and I'm guessing they're just bringing them back with in more shades. I'm not gonna get one because I already own one but I can recommend those. They're really nice. One thing that is releasing today is the new collection from Lunar Beauty. I do you think I'm getting this one in PR? I'm pretty sure that Manny is sending this out in PR. Lunar Beauty is the brand owned by Manny MUA. I do have an affiliated code with them. If you do end up shopping from them, I think this one is 
uh, dropping 10 a.m. PST. So it's dropping very soon. It's dropping noon Central Standard Time. And if you order from the brand, do make sure to use a code. You don't have to use my code. Use somebody's code to get a discount. But I don't think the code works on bundle items. It only works on like the, the single items. I think this is so cute. It is a grungy, like swampy, yellowy, green, rusty, like color story. And then there's a pop of two purples. Uh, I know my friend Linda from Glitter Fallout was asking me if I could do a comparison with the At Forest site. And I, I will bring that one out when I'm using this palette and we can see if there's any similarities. I would say, I don't, I think they have a similar theme. I have, think they have a similar idea but I don't think there's going to be that many dupe shades in between the palettes. I'm thinking probably no more than three or four. It, just me guessing, but I that top row with the yellows, they look so good. That top row with the yellows, they, they look so good. I'm so excited about that row. If you know me, you know how I feel about yellow makeup and like, oh, so pretty. There's a highlighter palette. He said that this formula is similar to the um, Medusa highlighter palette that he had in the beginning. I've never tried that one, but my friend Heather Austin loves that palette. So I'm excited for him to have it in the quad, even though I prefer singles. I do understand why a brand sells a palette instead of a single, because it is very expensive to create a single instead of a palette, even though I prefer a single. That's a personal preference. And then there are three glosses. I really do like the Lunar Beauty gloss formula. He described these as very sparkly glosses. That's not my absolute favorite, but I think that bronzy one is gonna be really pretty. I, as I'm filming this on Thursday, I have not received this collection. I'm taking this weekend off to hang out with my husband. So I'm not gonna be filming throughout the weekend if this one shows up. I'm thinking I'll do like some swatches and a reel and something. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do the same with the glam light -like once that shows up, the Kiss collection. They also told me that was being sent out in PR. I did end up buying that Adept palette, the one that released last Friday. I ended up buying that one. So I'm thinking when I get back from New Orleans, I'll do another one of those four indie palettes for looks. How do you feel about that? I'm throwing it out there because I feel like it could be fun. And until then, I'll probably either receive another palette in PR or buy something myself because there's a lot of fun things like happening. I just want to be able to take this weekend off to spend time with my husband and i also have a bunch of things happening next week because i'm preparing for new orleans but let me know if you'd like that or if you still would like me to do a dedicated video on this one i'm open for suggestions but that's what i'm thinking right now too faced is releasing more shades in some of their popular products one of the products is the hangover um lip balm pillow balm and i really love that product and i'm excited to see more things come out so they're releasing three new shades is the very vanilla and it is a sparkly gloss again not for me pink mint also sparkly i do love mint though i do love mint but then there is the Cranberry Crush, which is not sparkly. That Cranberry Crush, I need to look at that one. If it looks good, I will buy it. I really like that product. I think it's a beautiful product. So far, my favorite is the banana one. I like it. It's like a milky pale yellow. That sounds disgusting, but it looks really nice on my lips. I love it. Then the Lady Bald um, Cream Lipsticks are coming out in more pinky berry shades. I think a lot of people will like that, not me. And then they're also coming up with the killer liners. These are the eyeliners, not lip liners. And they're coming out with a taupe that is a taupe, I know, groundbreaking. And then metallic burgundy. I think this is smart. Come out with some more shades for summer and spring. People love pinks. <laughs> people love pinks in some of your like most beloved formulas. Sure, why not? I wish they would come up with more shades in this one. I'm wearing this highlighter today. It's the Too Faced Moon Crush highlighters. Can we get more shades? I mean, I could do that one in a pink, honestly. Would not be sad at all. There's also a new palette coming from Clarity Cosmetics. This is the Euphoria palette. This one is $48. I think it might already be available. This is a very fun jewel toned and rich palette with some teals and blues and pinks. I've never tried the Clarity Cosmetics formula. I've heard some mixed reviews on it. And again, right now, I don't really have the time to review any specific palettes. Although technically, I guess I could include this one as my fourth palette in 
doing like a four palette for let me know if you're interested in that but also since some of my friends don't love this formula i'm worried that i won't either because we have a similar taste when it comes to makeup the packaging is stunning though that that mm. and i like the color story i think it looks really beautiful have you tried clarity cosmetics what did you think about it let a friend know i got a lot of tags in this one and i'm not surprised because i think that we are I'm not surprised by this. Okay, let me start at the beginning. Kaleidos is releasing semi-permanent hair colors, like more fun colors, going down the route of like Lime Crime, basically. Hopefully doing it better than Lime Crime because I feel like Lime Crime is a brand that just turned very, very boring. I have known about this for a really long time. They reached out to me way, way, way back when they were formulating these, asking if I wanted to try them. At that point, I was not into fun hair colors and I told them, I right now I'm not willing to try a fun hair color, but I know my friend Linda did and I will link her video down below. Remind me if I forgot because she did a review on these colors and she liked them. So I don't think it's weird for a makeup brand to branch into other things. Some do body care, some do candles, some do perfumes, some do hair colors. It's not unusual, it's not weird. And I know that some people that do very like bright hair colors, they're always looking for like the best brand. If I had, if I was bold and brave enough, I'd do that lime green. I think it's so cool. But I also love the color that we have like achieved right now. My hairstyle is this like, in Sweden, we would call it Råg Blond. If you're Swedish, you know what I mean, Råg Blond. I really, really like this. This is very, very close to the hair color I had when I was a kid, when I was always out in the sun. And I, this is my natural hair color, like the dark blonde. And my hair would always get like bleached in the sun. So I like this like having the hair color of my childhood. I, I kind of like that. But I also that lime green, that is very appealing. That is very appealing. But yeah, I'm not surprised to see this because I've known about it. Um, but I also think it's very fascinating that they've been so into neutrals and then all of a sudden they launch very bright hair colors. And I'm just like, I wonder if this is a nod to them doing even more colors. I will say, I did work with Kaleidos back in the days. We did do the Club Nebula palette. And at the time, the owner had all kinds of colors in her hair, bright pink, all the fun colors. So I'm guessing this is a passion project for her. She loves a bright colored hair color and maybe she's trying to make the perfect hair color, which makes sense. I think a lot of brand owners, like we want to create our perfect product. And sometimes maybe it seems a little bit weird for people from the outside, but I can totally see where they're coming from, even though I'm not interested in getting it. I'm just gonna quickly mention this because I think, I, I don't know if I'm gonna remember to mention this in my Sephora recommendations video, but I wanna quickly mention, because I think this is a great thing to get during the Sephora sale and get even more discount on it. And that is the Sephora favorites have come up with two new perfume sets. There is one that is the deluxe best-selling mini perfume sampler sets. And there is a bunch of really hype perfumes in here. So this is a Berber Goddess, Rosie Jane, Layla Lou, Car Carolina Herrera, Good Girl, Gucci Bloom, Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, Nest New York, Liché, and Fleur Missing Person. Really hyped fragrances and you buy this one and it is $90 and you get all of these samples to try out and then you exchange your, you get a voucher within this pouch and you exchange the voucher um, for a full-size fragrance it is usually a really good deal but if you buy it during the Sephora sale you can get another 10 15 20 percent off I always recommend getting these perfume samplers if you're interested in the sale and then they also have one a new one for the cologne samplers and this one is also $90 and it is so many good ones in here. There are so many. Oh, the Fleur Somebody Wood is in here. I love that one. Fleur Somebody Wood. It is so good. Such a good one. And also there is a, a replica jazz club in here, which if nothing else, you can get a full size of that one. And that full size is more than $90. So again, if you can get these, if these are still in stock for the Sephora sale, I definitely recommend these. Another new fragrance that is coming out is from Juliet Has a Gun that I mentioned before. And this one is just called Juliet. And this is a warm florals. It has dark cherry, jasmine, sambac, absolute, and tonka bean. And it is a seductive dark dark cherry blended with woody modern notes of pink pepper, cashmere, and its heart and a beautiful jasmine absolute. Okay, I mean, 
I don't want a jasmine perfume, but I know a lot of people love Julia Has a Gun as a fragrance brand, and they're coming out with like a warm floral with some um, cherry in there, and maybe it's really lovely. There's another fragrance coming out with a note that I don't see a lot, and this is from Nette, and I think that this one is available at Sephora as well. And this is Pear Jam, Eau de Parfum, and honestly, I love the scent of pear. When I was a teenager, my mom got me a uh, the toilet with pear that I wore, I think I was only like in fifth, sixth grade or something. So she didn't want me to have like a super fancy fragrance. It was a cheap fragrance. It was like a $10 fragrance, but it was pear and I loved it. So this one has Koji pear, rose essence and patchouli. And patchouli is one of those things that can go south really fast for me. So I need to smell this one and make sure that the patchouli is not taking over the pear. But I do think it's really, really pretty. And it does come in a small size as well. So maybe I might pick up the small size of this one at the Sephora sale for myself. Because it is available for early access at Sephora when I looked. So I'm guessing it's available for everyone when you're seeing this. Gizu is another brand that would have been so hyped because of their hair products and because of their lip oil. And they're actually coming out with their lip oil in a couple of new shades for summer. It is a sparkly pink and there is a sheer hot coral and a sheer pinky red. The coral looks orange to me. I, I've heard that this one smells, um, is it khaki that describes this as frying oil? Which just reminds me of my expired Kosas bronzer and I don't need that in a liquid form for my lips. Thank you very much because I feel like that would just feel like I'm putting oil on my lips and I that's not the luxury thing that I am looking for. I don't need no lip oil and when I look at the lip swatch here of the girl wearing the orange lip that just looks like my Blend Bunny orange lip oil. I mean I already own that one and I really love it so just makes me inspired to pick out like that one and use again for the summer. We've seen some sneak peeks from Dior from what they're coming out with this summer and it seems like they are expanding and like bringing out some of their cult products, the ones that are most famous right now, in three new colorways. And I honestly, I think that that is pretty cool. So they're gonna come out with pink lilac, which is probably a more lavender pink, poppy coral, which I am interested to see how this one is different from the coral one they came out with last year. That was way too pinky coral to be perfect for me. And then bronze glow. And can I say bronze glow looks stunning? Stunning. So it's going to be a lip gloss, a lip oil, and then a lip balm, and then the blush. So it's three lip products and the blush in these little capsule collections. I don't know when these are coming out. It says coming soon. I think this is super smart. I think this is super smart to just pick one or two or three colors and just bring out already existing colors in this capsule with that monochromatic low color. I think it's smart. And I think all of these products are pretty hyped by Dior, so I'm sure that this is going to be well received. The bronzy one looks beautiful. I don't think the blush is for me. And that lavender looks scary. Like, scary. But I'm wondering about that. I'm wondering about that. I need to see these in store. I need to see this in store. I'm not against it. The reason why I haven't bought a Dior blush yet is because I didn't like any of the colors uh, for me. NYX is coming up with several new things. They are celebrating 25 years. I just said that I was celebrating one year with my brand and I'm excited. 25 is so monumental. That's, that's so big, like 1999. Like not even from this millennia. <laughs> It's older than some of you watching this. So they're coming up with a bunch of things to celebrate this. And one of them is they're coming up with a new big palette. And it seems to be a half neutral slash cool neutral palette with pops of pinks and purples. This isn't for me. I don't like super big palettes. I don't mind the NYX formula. But I, one of the things that I have realized with packaging I just can't do, it is the clear plastic lid. Nothing to me screams low quality packaging than the clear plastic lid, unless it is like, you, is it the Dior Backstage that has the clear lid? Those look so beautiful. I can't do this, the Wet n Wild packaging. I've just realized that I will never reach. I just don't, I don't like that. But they're also releasing some sparkly glosses and I think people are gonna love these. 
I don't love a sparkly gloss on me. I love the idea of a sparkly gloss, but then when I'm reaching for stuff like outside of filming, I never pick something that's metallic or sparkly. Maybe my feelings get hurt again in that 2016-17 metallic lip trend. I just don't like sparkly lips. It's not my favorite, but the Butter Gloss is coming out in a Butter Gloss Bling in a bunch of different colors. They seem to be super sparkly. So if you love the Butter Glosses and if you like a sparkly lip, these are only $6. I'm sure these are gonna be very popular. Another brand that is releasing like new shades of something that's very popular is Urban Decay. They're releasing new shades in their Moon Dust Glitter, like sp sparkly shadows. They call them glitter singles at $24 each, but these are not a pressed glitter. They're just a very sparkly topper eyeshadow, which is really nice. And if you are not shopping in the brands, this is a fairly unique eyeshadow formula. It, it reminds me of some of the sparkly shades and some high-end formulas as well, but it's a nice one. They're coming out with Diamond Dog and Crushing Hard. Neither of these, it's like a rose gold and like an almost dirty olive brown. Neither of these are shades that I need. But I think it's fun that they're coming out with more shades, especially since this was such a popular formula for sure. Stila, which is a brand we don't talk about a lot, they're coming out with the Heaven's Hue Hydro Illuminator. It's a sheer light catching skin booster. And basically they say versatile, blendable, buildable, blah, 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 blah. You can use it all over your face or as a highlighter. It's almost like they're describing the Hollywood Flawless filter finish. But then when I look at the shades, it's one that's like champagne. It's a bronzy gold and a pink. And I don't know how these would look all over the skin, but listen, what do I know? They are available now at $29.82. Oh, they're at Amazon. What is it with Amazon and these pricings? Is it like AI pricing? Because like, is that not weird pricing? It Basically, this is a liquid illuminator that can be used either as a highlighter or as a base or to mix them with foundation, just as any liquid highlighter. <laughs> Speaking of this kind of product, Makeup Revolution is also coming up with their own. These are called Bright Light. Uh, I think it's like bronzing, bronzing drops or blush, oh, it's blush drops, glow drops, bronzing drops, basically just these mixing medium kind of drops, almost like a drunk elephant bronzini thing. I think that this is going to be one of those products that you're going to see every brand come out with. It just, it is what it is, but they're coming out with different versions. So there's going to come out with some that are more bronzy and some that are more like champagne-y. And I feel like that's something that a lot of brands are just realizing now that a lot of people are actually looking for this all over glow to put on their face before like putting on makeup. I'm not. I'm not. Although I will say I did try that one from... Glow Recipe, it's nice. It's really nice. It's easy to spread. It doesn't catch on. It doesn't dry down too quickly. And it doesn't leave you looking weird or patchy. It's just a little bit of a glow. I actually think that that one is the more subtle version that I've tried. And I'm actually like, you know what? I could be done with that. That one I actually did like. Some of the other ones that I've tried, it's either patchy, hard to blend, or Tin Man. And I want neither of those. Lisa Eldridge did release the Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint, $49. And they released it, I think, well, just recently. I actually did buy it because they have a US warehouse. And I am intrigued because I really did like the foundation to try this out as well. And I also got a bunch of comments from you asking me to try this one out. So I'm taking one for the team and I'm trying it out. She also released some lip pencils and I did buy, she had divided them into neutral tones, cool tones, and warm tones. And I decided to get a neutral tone, although I will say with the cool tones, it was only pinks, three shades of pinks. And I'm like, hmm, that was a little boring, but I did get one of the neutral tones. I love a good lip pencil. I love a good lip pencil. So I'm gonna be trying this one out. I think I got, oh, you even see it here on the model. I'm pretty sure I got T9. I'm pretty sure I got T9. Is that gonna be good or not? I don't know. It was described as having a golden undertone. I hope I don't hate it, but it's a skin tint. So it's supposed to be a little sheer. I'll make it work. Another brand that we hadn't talked about for a really long time, and then all of a sudden they're releasing two products in a season, and that is The Balm. This is the Quiet On Set setting powder. I love a setting powder in a compact, so it makes me a little intrigued, and they have a fair, light, medium, and a deep. 
And I think this is one of those translucent setting powders in a compact. It's $20, available now. I'm not running to get it, but this is one of those things. If I see anyone, like I need little to no convincing to pick something like this up. If somebody says they love a powder in a compact, I'm already at checkout entering my debit card information. Speaking of powders in a compact, this is the new upcoming powder from L'Oreal. This is the Infallible Cover Powder Mattifying and Oil Control Pressed Powder. Doesn't that sound delightful? I wonder how that's gonna be under the eyes though, if this is just gonna be one of those like face powders. It's gonna come in multiple shades. It's coming soon. It looks very intriguing. Again, I need little to no convincing to try a pressed powder because I love pressed powders. With that being said, my ride or die has been the NYX Pressed HD powder for a really long time and I don't see anyone else beating that one, but it doesn't mean that I won't keep trying. Okay, let's talk about some more industry news, some like news that have come up, some that are a little bit sad and some that are a little bit questionable. One of them is that Suva Beauty announced that they are closing down. And I will say I am not super surprised. Let me see if their website is up because they said they were gonna have a closing sale. So let me see if anything is on sale now or how it looks because the website is still open. Yeah, everything is on sale. Everything is on sale. Okay, I have tried Suba Beauty. I own some things from Suba Beauty and they were one of the pioneers of the indie makeup community. I remember thinking like they were so cool, they were so innovative, they were so colorful, but they did something that a lot of brands do and they keep forgetting that not only customers see what they do, but other brands see what they do too. And they were relying too heavily on their Hydra liners, which were their water activated eyeliners. That was honestly a great product. It was a beautiful product of great quality in lots of great colors, but they were forgetting that other brands can just look at what you're doing and do it too. And I feel like there's a lot of brands out there that kind of forget that like when you get a hero product from your brand, just look at all the dupes that are coming up for the Broncina with Drunk Elephant or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless finish, whatever, and all the poofy highlighters that we had last year or all the liquid eyeshadows we saw after Stila had the liquid eyeshadows brands watch other brands and Suva Beauty was relying too heavily on the fact that they have those Hydra liners that people love. Now every indie brand, every indie brand has water activated liners, sometimes in more colors to more affordable prices. And I don't think that they ever really had another product that was really good. They also missed out on the opportunity to do cake liner palettes. Why they never did that? They did that way after all the other indie brands started doing that. It's like, why didn't you do that earlier? If you were leaning so heavy on these hider liners, which is one of those things that you, and we talked about this before, when we were talking about like makeup brands that are going under, you need to have products that people either repurchase or you need to be very fun and innovative. So people keep wanting to buy your new releases, even though they're not repurchasing. And I don't feel like Suva Beauty, when they released eyeshadow palettes, they got pretty mediocre reviews. I, and this is me. I have been reviewing indie makeup for almost a decade. I don't know what the brand offers, except the Hydra liners and those eyeshadow palettes that nobody seemed to like. And that just shows me that you are not marketing. Oh, they had that topper palette as well, but that was $35 for eyeshadow toppers, pretty much like the Alchemy palette by Kat Von D. Remember when Kat Von D was still Kat Von D? That tri triangle palette, they had something like that for $35 from an indie brand when other brands were doing it better and cheaper and more exciting. So it's like, if you cannot be the cheapest one, you either have to be the first one or you have to be really innovative. And I don't think that they were doing any of that. I'm looking what other products they have and 
yeah, that's only those. What are these? I don't even know what these are. Oh, eye bases, I guess. I didn't even know they had that. So I think that Suva Beauty, and I think a lot of brands do that. I've seen some brands that I really love that just disappear into nothingness because they release something that is their hero product that everybody associates with their brand. And they just, they just sit there. They just, they don't go forward. They don't try to release more products. They don't try to innovate. They don't try to keep it fresh and keep it going. And I understand that not all brands have the budget to do something like that. But yeah, and I don't want to be harsh, but like, I am not surprised to see some, you know, these indie brands going because it's not, it's rough out there. It is rough in these streets. The competition is so fierce. And like I said, if you're not doing it the best, if you're not doing it the cheapest, and if you're not the most innovative, then what are you? So yeah, if you are interested in any Suva Beauty, and I will say the Hydra liners are great great you can get them at a steep discount right now i will leave a link down below i'm sad to see them go but also they're not like and i say this with love but you're not leaving a hole behind because other brands are doing these water activated liners so many brands. i mean even huda beauty did them you can't find them from other brands are they as good i don't know but there are so many options out there that I'm sure at least one of them are. We're gonna end with talking about this one. And this is from Motivate the Earth and she is a news channel. And you can see the logo right here. She was putting out this prompt that was like, is Selena Gomez selling rare beauty? And I thought this was really fascinating. This is gossip. This is allegedly, this is just rumors, but usually, where there is smoke, there is at least a little bit of sizzle. So this is what this one says. Actress and singer Selena Gomez has hired advisors to weigh offers for her cosmetics company, Rare Beauty, according to people familiar with the matter. Rare Beauty brought on the bankers to field interest from firms looking to invest or acquire the company, said the people who asked to not be identified talking about private discussions. Bankers have met with potential suitors but Gomez has not. Either way, Gomez, 31, expects to remain involved with the business. And this comes from Bloomberg, which is a pretty reliable news source. I will say, this is, I mean, am I sad to see one of the bigger and more, like, lucrative and just hyped... She is an indie brand, she owns her own brand. Am I sad to see that being bought by an investor? Yes. But business-wise, it makes sense. This is a great business move from Selena. She will probably, if she sells her brand now, when it has at its, I don't want to say peak, but it is super high, she will make bank. So in a financial way, and especially if she can stay on the brand as a creative, she is making the deal of a lifetime. So I think it's pretty cool. And I really like the discussion that, uh, motivate the earth had under and it's like would this affect your purchasing and of course the brand could change because sometimes when something is being inquired let's say that rare beauty is being acquired by estee lauder it, this is me just speculating i don't know if there are any of the suitors this is me making stuff up so let's say that they're being acquired by estee lauder for example this could be l'oreal this could be anyone it's not impossible that whoever buys them says, hey, we have our own factories, we have our own chemists, we have our own packaging, we will do our best to replicate your formulas, but we cannot promise that it will be 100%. That happens sometimes because sometimes these bigger brands have contracts with factories. I mean, that's what happened with Too Faced. Some of the things the formulas changed a bit. And that's probably because when Estee Lauder bought Too Faced, they were like, listen, we're going to go with these factories. We're going to go do the absolute best we can to keep it the same formula, but it might be a little different. That happens sometimes. Uh, and usually when you change a factory, even though you're bringing the exact same recipe, basically, it might still be some differences between formulations you've seen remember the becca thing with the jacqueline hill eyeshadow palette and they were using a factory they don't usually use and even though they were using the same like recipe that they always did the eyeshadows came out crap because the factory wasn't able to replicate 
the what Becca usually was used to having. So I wanted to hear your thoughts about this as a business standpoint. I don't know if this is true or not. This is allegedly, please don't sue me. If she sells rare beauty, probably the best business decision she'll ever make in her life. She's probably going to make bank, but I hope it doesn't affect the brand too much, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Speaking of rare beauty, they just put up this sneak peek saying, what could it be? I am guessing, and that's also what makeup on your radar is guessing. I'm guessing press blushes. That's what I'm thinking it's going to be. Rare Beauty does not have powder blushes. It will make perfect sense for them to come out with that. That's what I'm guessing that this is going to be. What do you think it's going to be? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, I forgot about to talk about this as well. Made by Mitchell is releasing pressed uh, bronzers. These are bronze pods, light shimmer baked luminous bronzers, leaves a silky sheen. They are available now, comes in 10 different shades, which I honestly think is really good. This seems to be very bright pictures here. So I don't know the dark one does seem pretty dark, but it's also very like a light picture. You can see there's a lot of light going on. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Am I going to pick this up? Probably not. I have not tried a lot of things from Made by Mitchell. Some I've tried. I haven't been overly impressed. And I also remember back in the day when the I ordered from the website and they almost tried to scam me. I remember that. So I only buy it from Beauty Bay because of that. But yeah, that one is coming soon. And a lot of people are die hard uh, Made by Mitchell fans. So you might like it. But let me just double check and uh, see if there's nothing else. I said that that rare room is going to be the last, but then I just keep on keep on chatting, but let me see. Nope. I think that's everything. Let me scooch back. Let me see if I can bring my hair back again. I like my new length. It's like a little lob. I think it's really cute. And I love the color that we have going on. I hope you're having an amazing, amazing Friday. Don't forget that the Cinch Beauty sale is going on until Monday. Check all the info in the description box. If you want to know more about the things that I've been talking about, please let me know what you think down in the comments. I love reading all of your theories and all of your recommendations or all of the things that you say we should not be getting. I love reading that as well. And yeah, have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye.